in addition to yielding of the gross section and rupture of the net section limit states. We need to consider another limit state when designing tension members. It is called block shear. Suppose the tension member is connected to a gusset plate using two bolts. The block shear failure for the member looks like this. The material failure manifests itself in the tearing of the member along two planes, the shear plane and the tension plane. This mode of failure is different from the rupture of the net section. The net section rupture is a failure along the tension plane only. Block shear is a simultaneous failure along two planes, the tension plane and the shear plane. Here we have the tension and shear stress strain diagrams for structural steel. If we refer to the tensile yield stress as Fy, the shear yield stress can be expressed as 0.6 Fy. Similarly, if we denote the tensile strength of steel as F sub U, the shear strength can be written as 0.6 F sub U. It is important to note that block shear failure occurs simultaneously along the tension and shear planes. Therefore, we can hypothesize that for design purposes, the tearing of the material occurs when two conditions are met. 1. Tensile stress along the tension plane reaches the material's tensile strength. 2. Shear stress along the shear plane is either at the yield point or has reached the material's shear strength. Put it differently, Block shear failure occurs due to the rupture of the material in the net tension area and either the yielding or rupture of the material in the shear area. Therefore, the block shear strength can be defined as the sum of two strengths, the rupture strength in the tension direction and the yield or rupture strength in the shear direction. The rupture strength in the tension direction equals F sub U times the net cross-sectional area along this plane. The rupture strength in the shear plane can be written as 0.6 F sub U times the net area along the shear plane. And the yield strength in the shear plane is 0.60 Fy times the gross area along the shear plane. The smaller of these two values constitutes the shear component of the block shear strength. AISC equation J4-5 presents these two equations this way. The expression to the left of the inequality sign is the sum of these two forces. The expression to the right of the inequality sign is the sum of these two forces. This equation simply states that the block shear strength equals the smaller of the two expressions. U sub BS is called block shear reduction coefficient. It pertains to the stress distribution pattern on the tension plane. The stress distribution in some beams may not be uniform. In such cases, we use a reduction coefficient of less than 1. For tension members, the stress distribution is assumed to be uniform. That is, U sub B S equals 1. AISC uses a resistance factor of 0 0.75 for block shear. Therefore, the equation for the block shear limit state can be expressed this way. Suppose our tension member has the standard L4 by 3 by 1 half cross section. Assuming A36 steel is being used, Fy equals 36 KSI and F sub U is 58 KSI. The two holes are made for a 3 quarter inch bolt diameter. The diameter of each hole equals the bolt diameter plus 1 eighth of an inch. 
The spacing between the two bolts is two inches, and the edge distance is one and a half inches. The bolts are located two inches from the edge of the long leg of the angle. We wish to determine the block shear strength of the member. The net tension area equals the gross shear area is, and the net shear area can be calculated as follows. According to AISC equation J4-5, nominal block shear strength can be expressed as, or, this equation simplifies too. The smaller of these two values controls the design. Therefore, the nominal block shear strength equals multiplying this value by the resistance factor for block shear, we get this is the design strength for block shear for our tension member. Now it is your turn. Solve the following exercise problems. <laughs>